Hey, welcome back to the Bootstrap 4 Alpha tutorial. My name is Brad Hussey from bradhussey.ca and codecollege.ca. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and compile SAS. So what is SAS? SAS stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheets. And here on the official website, they say it's CSS with superpowers. SAS is the most mature, stable, and powerful professional grade CSS extension language in the world. And basically, for those of us who don't really know what that means, it basically, SAS lets you make CSS more like a programming language where you can have variables, mix-ins, you can do math, you can pull in different SAS files, you can have extends and a whole bunch of other things. And if you were to go to the learn SAS section and you could you could see here just in the syntax, you can have variables or you can have say a font stack and you could put your font stack in there and then you can call that variable later in your CSS. And you can see it pretty much just looks like CSS, but you can actually have more flexibility or you can nest your CSS. You can have nav and then ul within nav and then it, it will compile like this. So it essentially just makes your CSS more readable and easy to create and you, you have a lot more flexibility. Now in order to compile your SAS, you need to use a compiler and there are a couple of different ways of doing that. So if you go to the install tab, there are two ways of, of getting started with SAS. Using an application that has a, a user interface like CodeKit, Compass, GhostLab, Hammer, so on and so forth. Or you can straight up use the command line and have the command line compile your SAS for you. Now, depending on who you are, what kind of developer or programmer you are, you may want to use one or the other. I've used both, but I prefer using uh, the CodeKit application, which I will show you in a moment. But first, I wanna show you how to use the command line. And so if you're using Linux, Windows, or Mac, there are a few different ways, and so you need to follow these instructions. I'm using a Mac, and so these this is how you install uh, SAS using a Mac. Now it requires Ruby, but because you have a Mac, Ruby comes pre-installed. And so, so these are the steps right here. You need to open your terminal and you need to install SAS using gem install SAS. If you get an error, then you just need to run the sudo command first, gem install SAS, that will override and act as an admin. Then double check to see if you have SAS installed once all of that has uh, finished its process. So I'll show you here in terminal what that looks like. So I'm just gonna run sas-v, and that will tell me if I have SAS and what the version is. So SAS 3.4.20, selective Steve, that is the latest version. So yes, I have SAS and it's good to go. So you need to click on the learn more about SAS or hit, hit the learn SAS tab up here, and this will give you the SAS basics. I do suggest that you go through all the documentation and kind of get a hang of it because there's so much to SAS and I'm not going to go into all of it. I'm really just going to show you the basics, how to install, compile, and in specific with our project, add our CSS to a SAS file so that you can use Bootstrap 4 and you can actually use SAS and play around with what they give you uh, in the Bootstrap 4 version. Under the pre-processing section here, it gives you a description of what you need to do to compile your SAS. Now, before we do anything in the terminal again, I'm going to go back to our website here and I want to show you right here in my Bower components folder. Now, you may or may not have this depending on if you installed via Bower. In my Bower components, I have Bootstrap folder and then I have all of the, the, the download of Bootstrap 4. Now, if you just downloaded it straight, you still would have got this folder, but it wouldn't be in your Bower components folder and depending on how you installed it, it might be in a different directory on your site. But if you have the full install of Bootstrap with all of the source files, that's what you need to do this specific example that we're about to do. You can see there's an SCSS folder. And that SCSS folder has a bunch of SAS files. Now you might be wondering, what's with the underscores and SCSS? I've never seen that. So that's the suffix, that's the extension for the files. So alert.scss, that's looking for SAS. And the underscore basically means it is a partial, meaning this is only a, uh, a small amount of the CSS. So this is the CSS just for the alert. This is the CSS just for animations. This is the CSS just for breadcrumbs. And the underscore tells the compiler not to compile this file as an ind individual file. We don't want alert.css, animation.css, breadcrumb.css. That's a lot of CSS files and that's messy, takes a lot of loading time. We don't want that. The magic here is that you can have little bits and bytes of CSS in your partials 
and then import them into a master SAS file like bootstrap.scss. And you'll see this one doesn't have an underscore, which basically says compile this file as bootstrap.css. And you see it's importing all of these partials using import like this. So this file is actually going to be a big file importing all of these partials in within it. So you do really only have a single style sheet or very minimal amount of style sheets. And you also might be wondering, well, where's the suffix? Where's the extension on the file there? How does it know? Well, SAS is smart. SAS doesn't need to see the underscore or the extension, the suffix, uh, when you're importing. It just knows that w what the file is. It's just smart like that, which is really cool. And also kind of odd for people because ever you know you're kind of used to typing variables dot css or variables dot less or variables dot scss whatever it is and so that's how that works now what we want to do is we want to tell our command line to watch our bootstrap 4 folder and look specifically well we're going to watch bootstrap 4 bower components and then bootstrap we're going to watch this folder here so that we can get all this scss and then we want to compile that scss into a separate folder called styles or something like that. So let's go back to the SAS documentation. And basically the most direct way to compile, say a single file would be using this syntax. So you run SAS and then the first part of this syntax is the file that you want to, uh, to compile the SCSS file. So input.scss and then the next is output.css. So it's basically you run SAS, this is the file we're watching, this is the file we want to export to. Now here's a little bit more uh, complicated of, of syntax where you can watch a directory and you can export to another directory. So SAS watch this directory app slash SAS and then the colon means export to this directory. So anything that's in app slash SAS, export those SAS files into this folder or set of folders, public slash style sheets. So let's try that. Let's go into our terminal and I'm going to change directories to find the bootstrap for uh, directory that we're working in. So I'm going to go CD for change directory. I'm going to look for my desktop. I'm working in bootstrap four. And then I'm going to look for my Bower Components folder and Bootstrap. Now we're in that directory. So now what I want to do is I want to SAS and I'm going to watch a directory. SAS watch SCSS. I'm going to watch that whole folder. And I want to compile all that SCSS. The, the, I want to compile that into CSS into a directory I'm going to make up right here. I'm going to say, I'm just going to say compiled. And then I'm going to hit return. SAS is watching for changes. So it's already compiling some of the CSS or the SAS. So let's go over and see what that looks like. So we have our SCSS and it's watching this folder, but it compiled to a folder we just called compiled. And so you, we have a number of CSS files here and CSS maps. So it looks like there's a lot more in here than there really is. There's one, two, three, four CSS files bootstrap.css, bootstrap reboot, bootstrap grid, and bootstrap flex. So if you just want to use flex, then you use this file. You just basically tell in your HTML head, you want to link to bootstrap-flex. And what is bootstrap flex? Well, if we go to SCSS folder here, find the bootstrap flex that's SCSS. It's enabling flex, that's a variable, and it's importing bootstrap.scss. And what is bootstrap? What is that importing? Well, it's importing all of the bootstrap uh, partials here. It's importing all of these. So basic bootstrap flex, the only thing different is that it's enabling flex. So it's flipping that variable, which is located in the variables uh, SCSS right here. So these are all variables. Enable flex by default is false. We're flipping that variable. You see how it kind of works? And if you've never seen this before, it might be a little, you know, crazy looking, but there's so much power in this and it's really great. So as you can see here in our compiled folder, we have the bootstrap flex. We have bootstrap grid.css. If you want to just use the grid and not any of the other stuff, bootstrap reboot. If you just wanted to use their, their reboot 
or if you just wanted plain the plain bootstrap. And so what's cool about this is that you don't make changes to your CSS file. You just make changes to your bootstrap SCSS. So you just make changes to these files, recompile. So anytime you make a change, so let me just, for example, I'm just going to go ahead and just delete all of this. I save. Terminal is actually compiling that. It saw a change to this file. Now it's recompiling everything. So now my, my CSS file is going to be different. Now I'm going to put that back because I, I don't actually want to do that. It's going to recompile again. And so now my CSS file is up to date. So that's how cool that is. Now I, I do want to say it's bad practice to make changes to the native uh, just installed version of Bootstrap here. If you just download Bootstrap and just make changes to all these SCSS files, then that's a problem because, well, what if you want to update Bootstrap? Then you're going to lose all of that. What if you want to update to Bootstrap 4.2 or whatever it is? You're going to re-download it and you're going to overwrite all of your changes. So we're going to look uh, in the next video, we're going to look into how to skip past that but still use the power of this. And uh, I'll show you that coming up. But first I wanna give you one more example. Uh, we're gonna jump out of this bootstrap folder and we're just gonna create a simple styles folder with just like a, a dummy SCSS file and try this compile thing one more time. So I'm gonna open up my finder to create a directory here. And in my bootstrap four folder, I'm just gonna say styles. So I have that directory and now in my code editor, under styles, I'm going to create a new file and I'm just going to call it sass.scss. And in here, I could just put CSS. Like you saw, you don't really need to put any specific sass syntax. You could just put normal CSS, such as body, font size, 20 pixels, level one heading, color pink. You could do that. And let's just, uh, I'm just going to save this. It's not going to do anything because it's not watching that file anymore. So what I want to do is I want to go back here and I want to Control C, that will cancel the SAS from watching that directory. And I want to watch a new directory. So I need to jump out of this directory. So CD, now I'm in Bower components, now I'm in the root. So now I could just say SAS, watch. Now I'm going to watch styles. And I want to export it to, uh, let's say, styles compiled. Okay. So we got styles my sass.scss and it's got the compiled version. So it's made the first compiled version. As you can see, it's not any different, but anytime I make a change to my scss, it will be compiled into my sass.css. And then all you have to do is in your in your HTML file, just call the CSS file. And so that's how that works. That is the basic way, one of the ways of installing and compiling sass. Now the other way is by using a tool such as something like CodeKit. Now I have CodeKit here, and I won't give you a huge rundown of how to use to CodeKit, but I'll show you an example. So I'm going to go ahead, I actually have it already here, but I'm just going to redo it for you. I'm going to add a new project. I'm going to look for Bootstrap 4, and I'm going to add that. So it has all of my directory here. Now what I want to do is basically it's going to watch for all that, the, the, the SAS and everything like that. CodeKit does a lot more than just CSS. CS, it, uh, it minifies images and JS and all this other stuff too. But what I want to do is I can click on the SCSS file and see the information about what it's going to do. So this file generates an output file. It's going to output to CSS and then sass.css. Well, I can change that, but I'm just going to leave it for now. So now I have to turn off the terminal compiler because I don't want a double compiler. So I'm going to control C. So that's done. Now CodeKit is officially watching this uh, directory for me. So now if I go back to my sass.scss, let's make a new change and say paragraph tag, font size, 30 pixels, save. Now it just made a CSS folder with sass.css. So CodeKit just compiled it for me. That might actually be way more appealing to you. Uh, I know it is for me. I like doing that better because I can see it. I can play around with the, I can actually click on it. I can make changes here. I can actually change settings and I don't have to mess around with the command line. The command line's fun, but for me, I actually like this better.
So those are the two ways of installing and compiling your SAS files. So in the next video, we're actually going to be playing with my personal workflow to uh, specifically for bootstrap websites where you can overwrite the bootstrap CSS and not actually worry about losing your work. And it's also much better because it makes the bootstrap download a lot more slim because instead of using every single element of bootstrap, we can just pick and choose which ones we want and then compile that to a CSS file. So I'll show you that in the next video.